It's the calm before the storm. Nova Scotia is about to have another snowstorm. We call them nor'easter when they come up the Atlantic seaboard and come up through Nova Scotia. It's promising to be a good one. 20 to 30 centimeters in some areas, especially along the coast, which is where I'm at. So, got to get out today. Today it's absolutely beautiful out here. It'll show up a little bit better. Well, let me see if I can do this. See the sun in the blue sky up there? Hopefully that's showing up. Yeah, because tomorrow I'm not going to be able to do this. And then it'll be a few days after before I can get back out and likely back on snowshoes. So what am I doing today? Just a short hike. Well, okay, I have no idea how long the hike is going to take, but hopefully this will just be a short video. And I'll tell you what my intent is. And there I see one already. Okay, I'm scouting. This is a scouting mission. I'm looking for a couple of things that I'm going to mark one way or another, maybe a little piece of trail tape or just mark their location in my memory uh, that I can come and use or, or use portions of them in future videos. So the first one is, and I see one and I'll show it to you. It's too big for my needs but I'll show it to you. It is a yellow birch. So that's number one. And the other is going to be a small, either balsam fir or white pine. And I'm not going to say why. I'll let you guess. You tell me what I'm going to be using those for in future videos. But I do have another intent. I, I will be making a cup of coffee. I mean, that's part of the whole point of coming out some days, but it's what I've got on. I had questions about what I am wearing from a recent video. It's my Canadian Army three season park is what it's referred to. And uh, I never thought to share this with you, but you know, the more I looked at it and I thought about it, it's actually something you may be interested in. Uh, it's a review, but I bought these in a, th in a thrift store. There's two pieces here. I bought these in a thrift store, but they're still available on the surplus market in Canada here. I'll probably throw a few links in the, in the video description. and. If you're into outdoor clothing and you're looking for budget clothing that is really going to stand up, yeah, you may well want to take a look at these. All right, let me just show you the yellow birch. I think I see a smaller one that may be worth me tagging for later. Uh, then we'll move on a little bit. Actually, it turns out they're all around me, but still a little bit too big. This one right here, I'm trying to get to this where the sun doesn't shade it out. Uh, may not be what most people think of as yellow birch because it's not really yellow, but you can tell from the bark and if there were leaves on the tree, I could tell from that, but it, there's no leaves on the tree. So that's one, but that's too big for what I'm looking for. Let's see what else I can find. All right, I thought I'd share this. Um, I went off trail, started breaking new trail into some snow looking for good candidates and I have a small, oh, here's one that may not be bad at all. Yeah, in fact, I think that will actually do. I'll mark that one for later. This is a small balsam fir. Actually, has a couple of good segments on it that I think are usable. But I wanted you to see this. That is my footprints as I went in, and they're right to the top of my boots here. So there's still a lot of snow here in the woods. In fact, I'm gonna have to back out of where I'm at because it's a little bit too hard to push through. But there is a good candidate for my balsam fir. All right, now to see if I can find a yellow birch. All right, there's something I wasn't expecting to find, and mostly because I wasn't looking for it. But mushrooms, late February. Uh, best guess is oyster, because there are oysters that will come out in the winter. But I, I can't quite tell from the morphology. I can't quite see the gills from where I'm at. And it kind of threw me through on a sugar maple tree at a little bifurcation there. I'll have to do a little research on that. I mean, they're too small to harvest in anyway, so. But nice to find mushrooms in the middle of winter. Kind of gives you hopes for the spring. All right, I found my yellow birch. At least uh, one that I can do what I want with come, well, a little later. I've got to wait for a little later, more towards spring. There is the larger parent tree, and then there is a kind of a sibling growing right off of it. And uh, again, well, if I look way up, probably not gonna pick up on the camera. You can see the yellowish, goldish tint in the bark. But for distinction, how about that? That's a paper birch. So now you can see the difference. Paper birch, yellow birch. Take a look at how the bark peels and you'll, you'll have a better understanding. And I also confirmed it because right on the end of this one is some small little twigs. 
and I broke one off and pulled it between my teeth to peel the bark back and I got the winter green flavor that I was looking for. Hint, that will play into the future video. Okay, I found what I was looking for as far as scouting and I'm getting a little tired and a little hot. So it's time to sit down and have some coffee. Finding all kinds of things in the woods today. You see the rub, kind of low. Of course, then again, there's still two, almost three feet underneath the snow. Young buck, best guess, rubbing his antlers. Not new though, very dry. <sighs> Not a lot of choices here, but this is one that may work. That's a nice big rock sitting under that mound of snow. So that's a recent blow down. So all green at the top. If I can clear that rock off, as long as it's flat, I'll sit there and I'll make myself a cup of coffee. Should have brought a shovel. I think there's a rock under here. Oh, there it is. That well, may not be the best, but... All right, that'll work. I'm not quite sure where I'm gonna put my stove. It's a nice lightweight version, so maybe I can put it right on the snow. Maybe I'll just tramp a little bit of area down here and then give it some place to set that's fairly stable. Oh, that's nice, right there, yeah. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, first off, take my coat off, because I'm starting to get warm. Get my kit out, get ready to make coffee, but making coffee is part of the video today, so don't worry, you won't miss that. All right, so this is gonna be one of those awkward setups where I'm not gonna be able to show you everything at once. So I'm gonna show you what I'm using. I have it set up down here in the ground, and then I'll reposition the camera so you can actually see my setup down here, and we'll get things going. So the first thing I wanna show you is my stove. And, uh, you know, maybe I can bring this into the camera a little closer. Esbit stove. So I've had this Esbit stove probably since my teen years. And uh, that's when I first started getting out into the woods with and trying out little pieces of kit. Uh, you know, something lightweight because, well, that was the thing. Everybody had these Esbit stoves with the Esbit tablets. I never did enjoy using Esbit tablets. I mean, I've used them, the warm water but they don't bring water to a rolling boil, at least not easily, and not in cold temperatures very well. However, the stove as a stand is actually a nice piece of kit because you can fold, well, if it was Esbit, you can fold all your tablets right up inside of it. But I've got something else inside of it that I'll share with you. I might as well bring it over. All right, so there is my Esbit stove, and inside, is a homemade little alcohol stove, and this is a wick stove. It's made from a pull-top tuna can that I cut off to just about three quarters of an inch from the bottom. And then I have carbon felt inside, two layers of carbon felt, because I think this is five mil thick carbon felt. Real easy, I actually used the can itself to cut the carbon felt, just put it on it and turned it, and the sharp edge of the metal was all it took to actually cut, the, like a cookie cutter, the carbon felt. So two layers of carbon felt in there. And uh, it folds up inside of this just nicely. You don't have to spend a lot to get something effective. In fact, I'm gonna leave a link for some carbon felt that I found on Amazon. I think I got mine off of AliExpress some time ago. But I'll leave a link. If you want to spend money on anything for DIY projects, this is what you want to buy, some of this, because you can do so many different things with it. I'm sure you know that. But something like this, well, you'll see just how effective it is in a minute. Look at that. Perfect little stove. So I'm going to set that up. Now, because I'm setting it on the snow, I wanted something, one, to support it, two, to insulate it. So this is a dollar store silicone countertop 
pot rest, you know, just to keep the heat from any pots off of your counter. They were, I don't know, $1.50, $1.75. And this is not bad. I mean, wood stoves, I don't know that I would use it for that, but for alcohol stoves, insulates and spreads the weight out a little bit. So that is the base. And this has been with me for a long time. This is a little, it's Esbit makes a version. I don't think, Alox, this has Alox. You're not gonna see it anymore, but Alox on the side. But this is just a small, I think they say 800 milliliter, milliliter kettle, hard anodized aluminum. Just a nice little kettle. And I've had this probably since I was 25 years old. I'm thinking I just happened to pick it up one day I'm not even sure where I got it at that point, because <laughs> back in the day, Amazon and AliExpress, I don't think they were around, but I dug it out because it is just small enough and light enough for what I want, and uh, that's my kettle for the day. Water in a stainless steel bottle that I picked up at the thrift store. And a really nice double wall insul or double wall mug, stainless steel mug with a lid on it that I also picked up at the thrift store. And my coffee's inside that. I'm going to show that when I go to make it. But now I've got to get some water on. All right. See if I can get this a little bit level, so you can just see the stove a little better. Uh, I used to do this for a long time, and that is, oh, that's more than enough. Carry my alcohol around in empty five-hour energy bottles. They work. They're tough. You're not going to uh, snap one or break one open in your bag. So that works for doing that with. Quick get that lit. Find my ferro rod. There it is. Let's throw a spark into it. There's a bare spot. Yep, that's lit. You can't, wow, yeah, it's lit. <laughs> Good old alcohol, right? Nice thing about using a wick stove like this is they really don't take any time to bloom. They don't need to. The wicking is what makes them work so well in the cold. So I don't need a lot of water. And that's plenty. Probably more than enough. Now, put the lid on. Going to be stable? Yes, it is. All right, nothing now to do but wait for a few minutes to that to come to a boil, and I'll show my coffee of the day. Okay, my water is heating here. That's the nice thing about alcohol, right? So silent. You don't hear a thing from your stove, and sometimes you can't see a thing. That can be a little bit of a downside, but... All right, what have I got? Uh, I'm going to get into the military clothing that I'm wearing in a moment, but I'll show you this. Definitely not a review, but it would have picked up on camera, so it's only fair that I show you something I'm testing. And this is the Helicontex Bushcraft Haversack. And I bought this. Or, sorry, I didn't buy it. My wife bought it. It was a Christmas gift. And... Uh, you know, I'll be honest, when I got it, I was super impressed with the quality of the bag itself. But it has a couple of idiosyncrasies that I'm not quite sure. But that'll all come out in the review. But definitely, got to like the color of that, and the size is perfect. I have the big Helicon text bag, which I've reviewed in the past. They did send that to me, and I absolutely love it. It's appeared in recent videos. But my friend Alex at Aurora Borealis Knives made the observation that, uh, well, he was looking for, uh, a ha is looking for a haversack, and he looked at this and he thought this would be a good call. He knew I had one, so he asked me about it. And I recommended the other one to him, and he said, no, it's too big. <laughs> and he said he's likely to overpack it uh, when he goes out. You're forced to keep things minimal when you've got a small bag like that. And you know, he's absolutely right. I've done exactly that with that other bag. Put so much stuff in it that I said, why am I doing this on a single strap across my shoulder when I could have all of that in a small backpack distribute it more evenly across? It's a good thing these have wide straps on them because that's about the only thing that kept it comfortable. And still use it. I just don't fill it with this, all the heavy stuff. I distribute that maybe in a, another bag. Like the two of these together would go well. And that may be part of the review now that I think about it. All right, put that aside. Water hot yet? No, I don't think. Oh, it's getting there. Steam. 
Okay, the other two things that I have right now to share, and this came as a result of uh, com comments, questions, I guess, from viewers on one of my other videos. Actually, the one where I was out snowshoeing, and they saw what I was wearing, and it was my Canadian Army three-season parka, also referred to as the Wet Weather Gore-Tex parka. And uh, I picked it up at a, a thrift store about two years ago at something like $5.99. And uh, I consider myself very lucky, and I still do. Uh, I don't wear it a lot, and I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, you often see me, you will see me most of the winter, wearing my Canadian Army cold weather wool shirt. And I've got a couple of those I've picked up all at the thrift store. And the other thing is this. This is a Canadian Army fleece jacket, and it makes a great mid-layer jacket. All I've got underneath is a very lightweight wool base layer, and I've got this on top, and the reason I don't have the other jacket on is because the combination is so warm from pushing through the woods here, I was starting to get a little damp, so it needed to cool off a little bit. Plus, it gave you a look. I'll have to stand up so you can see what this looks like. Uh, maybe I'll bring some close-ups and, and uh, show you a few features. I mean, this, the fleece is really very, very simple, but it's got some nice features. You can still buy these on the surplus market. In fact, I was looking just before I came out. Uh, if you go Canadian military surplus, uh, there has got to be at least four or five websites that popped up for me and these are on all of the websites that I found, Hero Doors, uh, hmm, I can't even remember some of the others, uh, but they still have all of these. And the prices are, I think this sells for $30, the jacket sells for $50, I can see in those wool shirts for about 50 bucks. So I think I hear a chainsaw somewhere up in the woods here. Okay, I think I'm ready for coffee and I want to show you that and then I'll do a little detail on these two items. And my water is just about to a boil, so, all right, let's just put the cup aside for half a second here. Uh, one of the things that uh, people commented on, and it all came from the video where I had said, what do you want me to do on these hiking walks or hiking a coffee type of videos? And, and one comment was, show different ways of making coffee. Well, okay, that's easy. I can do that because I enjoy doing that. They said, not necessarily brands, but just different methodologies. Well, there's going to be instance, instances where I can't really separate the two. I'm going to have to show you a brand to show you the technology or the way that the coffee is made. And uh, this is one of them. So, uh, all right, here it is. It is Mountain Coffee Company. It's out of Quebec, Canada. And what they have are these pouches. And inside of the pouch is like a tea bag. And it's a Quite a large tea bag. I weighed them. There are 12 grams of coffee inside. I'll talk about the coffee in a second because my water's to a boil. And what you do is put it in your mug, pour your hot water on, and oops, I lost the label. I'll have to dig, dig that out because that's how you pop it up and down. And add 250 milliliters of water. That's it. That's all you add. And uh, give it five minutes and it's good to go. Okay, that's what the instructions say on the back of it. They have three different types of coffee. This is their Stronger Roast Kenyan. Strong Aromatic Kenyan Coffee. And, uh, yeah. All right, so that's the methodology. I'm going to talk about using tea bags and filter bags like this for making coffee as I do the taste test because I think that's relative to it as well. All right, so while my coffee is steeping, and that's basically what it's doing, it's like a big tea bag, I'll show you the fleece, and uh, then I'll put the jacket back on so I can show you what the jacket is all about from the outside. But the jacket has, or jacket coat, parka, that's what it's referred to, has a unique feature that I've used a few times, and I have not even seen anybody suggest this on any other coat. And I think it's well worth making this one look worth looking at, and you'll see why. First off, it's a good, dense fleece. Very soft fleece, if you can see that. Well elasticized cuff, so they stay nice around my wrist. Long enough in the sleeve, I don't even know what size this is. They have a, uh, if you're familiar, Canadian military sizing is a little different. It's not like small, medium, large. It, it's a uh, four digit designation. First two, I think, are 
chest and the other one and then be body height and you find the right one. So there's a scale for it. I'll see if I can find it. If I can, I'll put it in the video description. And I think the surplus sites usually can provide that information to you as well. Uh, one pocket, just one, and I have my glasses in here, but it's a large pocket, large enough for a notebook, and there's a pen slide down here. Just the one pocket, reinforced on the elbows down to the wrist, both sides of course, and uh, shoulders as well as you can see. So if backpacks and the like you can reinforce there. And let me zip it up, I have to take the microphone off to do this. But it's a, it's a tall collar and most of the time I don't wear it all the way up. Of course it's going to interfere with my microphone as well. But you can see it's a tall snug around the neck collar. I usually wear a neck gaiter and this down a little bit just for that reason. But it's soft enough. The zipper is not heavy duty but it's, it works and you know this is not meant to be your what is it? Your main jacket that you have to rip off in a hurry. This is just a mid layer that you would wear underneath it. Uh, oh, yeah. Pit zips. You don't see that often on a fleece jacket. If I can reach them. Yeah. Two bi directional pit zips that you can vent off some heat with. What did I say? $30, I think, is what I saw for them. If you're looking for a nice fleece. Oh, wait a minute. What's around the waist? No, I thought there was, it's elasticized, but it doesn't have a drawstring or, you know, a cord lock or anything else. But, uh, all right, that's the fleece. Now I'll put the jacket back on and I'll show you or model that for you. And then we'll get down to talk about its features. All right, modeling, oh, what have I got in my pocket? Don't need those. Those are my Catula micro spikes. I thought I might need them today, but I don't. Uh, yeah, okay, there's a comment worth making already. Pockets on the sides right here are cavernous. They're huge. You can stuff more things. You really don't even have to take a backpack most of the time. You can get a lot of things down here and they're subdivided inside. They're meant for uh, the C7 or M16 variant that the Canadian military uses for magazines. So I can put four magazines in the side of the pockets right against my body. Uh, if I had a need for it, the military does, of course, but they do provide a place to put things like sunglasses or things you just don't want roaming around inside your pocket. So they're, they're nice to have, those two big cavernous pockets. And I'll come to those zips in a minute. Okay, what are the pockets? On the exterior is these pockets. Now, they zip shut down. So that's different. Instead of pulling up to access, you well, you do pull up to access, but you don't pull up to close it. It zips down and their entry is from the opposite side. These are huge. You can get a lot of stuff inside of one of these pockets. So they're meant to be crossbody reached. They're definitely not hand pockets. Same thing in here. I've got my cell phone in there right now. And uh, oh, now that's a heavy zipper. Let's see if you can see that. That's a heavy duty YKK zipper, bi-directional on the bottom. So you can zip it up from the bottom or the top. And pockets on the inside. Yep, yeah, there is pockets here with Velcro closers so that you can, not gonna lose anything really valuable and important there. Sorry about that folks, I'll not answer that cell phone message. And uh, same thing on the other side, huge pocket right here. And two more features on the outside. One is a drawstring right in the middle. So you don't have to take or open your jacket up if you want to draw it tight and keep the wind from coming up. There's a drawstring and the tube for it or the channel for it is right around the waist on the outside. So you can pull that snug and get a nice snug around here to prevent wind from going up. And one more at the bottom which also does, it has a unique kind of cord lock on these things. So once again, I can keep it tight around just below my butt so the wind's not coming up there as well. And of course, hook and loop or Velcro there and one pocket here. So not an excessive amount of pockets on the outside, but well thought out in terms of uh, the ones that you're more likely going to use. This says it actually has more space and pockets. You can really load this up now. All right. I'm going to take the coat off because my coffee's ready and I'll talk a little bit more about what I call the secret hidden feature for this coat. All right, first things first, coffee. Uh, it's been about four or five minutes of steeping. 
stayed nice and hot. See the steam rising off of it. I'm going to let it drain a little bit. I have did this at home with one of these bags. Snow falling out of this root pack on top of me. Did it at home where I took a spoon to squeeze out the last little bit of goodness. Uh, don't, and I'll tell you why in a minute. I'll put that in the snow, but I do have a bag to take it home with. Let's see what we got here. Still hot though. All right, this one is better than the last one I tried. But still it has the same characteristics. Okay, so, uh, first off, I want to thank Mountain Coffee Co. for sending out the samples. They sent out four little bags of coffee, these sachets, tea bags, coffee bags, whatever you want to call them, for me to try out. And they're intended specifically for people to use in the out of doors, like this. And what they have going for them is convenience, obviously. Individually packed, makes one cup of coffee each, uh, not a big cup of coffee though, that's my first comment. 250 mils is one cup of water, so most people drink at least that much coffee. I know I do. Um, I like bigger cups of coffee when I'm having it. So it doesn't make a big cup of coffee, but I guess the question is, is does it make a good cup of coffee? Well, the first, before I answer that, like I said, there were three flavors that they sent me, or three different coffees, a Colombian, this Kenyan, and I can't remember what the last one was. The Colombian is the medium roast, the Kenyan is their darker roast, and the other one, uh, uh, well, okay, the, it, there'll be links where you can see what they have, is the lighter roast, and I prefer medium to dark roasts most of the time. So, here's what I want to say. I've tried this before. I have empty tea bags at home that I picked up, I forget where, a long time ago, you can find them, uh, online if you want, if you're looking to make your own tea bags from leaf tea, like green tea or botanicals that you might find out in the woods. And these little tea bags are handy. You can put them in and, you know, you've got a, a way of keeping all your tea together. And I've tried them with coffee. Good coffee. This is good coffee. Okay. This is good fresh roasted craft coffee. This isn't your uh, grocery store brands of coffee. Now, here's what I found when I tried this myself. I did the right amount. In fact, I used about 15 to 17 grams of coffee in these little tea bags. And uh, I wasn't really all that happy with the outcome. It could be that the tea is too, or tea, the coffee is too compacted inside of the bag that it doesn't get to really, the water to move around with the coffee to do maximum extraction because what I found was it was a little thin is the best way to say it. And uh, I, you can leave it longer to, to steep and that actually is my, my recommendation even with this. Leave it longer than four to five minutes, seven or eight minutes, as long as it doesn't get cold if you've got a nice insulated mug. Uh, leave it longer, you'll get a better extraction. But it's kind of like French roast. Really, this is almost like brewing French roast, but much more convenient because you just pull the bag out and you're, you know, you can dispose of it much more easily. A uh, cleanup is a is a is a breeze, right? No special equipment, just a mug and the the water and the uh, the bags themselves. I wasn't happy with what I made at home. Let's put it this way, it works, but it isn't my first choice method of making coffee. Now, there's another way of doing it at home, which is to use basket filters, like you would for your 10 or 12 cup coffee, drip coffee maker at home. Take one of those baskets, put your coffee in two or three tablespoons. I do it by weight, so uh, 15 to 17 grams, depending on the coffee I'm using. And I used uh, dental floss and a clove hitch and tied it tight so that, you know, I got, that's how I got the, the tea bag effect with the string on it. And uh, again, it's very easy to do. It's very cheap to do it that way. But again, it didn't really turn out the way I wanted it to. Now, a lot of people are happy with this method of doing it. I've had viewers tell me they like do, making coffee that way. And uh, I'm not, not disagreeing. They may well like having coffee that way. It's just not the way I like having my coffee. So what am I saying here is this is at least as good, if not better, than the homemade ones that I did. And uh, 
Yeah, that says, that's, the, that's what I can say for it. The flavor of this one, especially this Kenyan, is better than the homemade ones I did. Now, I took the one I tried before, the Colombian, apart after I was finished with it because I wanted to see what the grind was. And it was a fairly coarse grind. And that is done intentionally so that, uh, squirrels? Something moving in the woods down there. Uh, that's done intentionally because it, it helps circulate the water through the coffee. It keeps the fines or the grinds, the silt from coming through the gauze a little bit better. But it does mean it has to sit in the water longer if you want to get all the coffee flavor out. So uh, keep that in mind as well. That's the reason. If you're going to make your own grind it coarse, leave it in the water longer. Now, having said that, the bag itself that it is in, a unique shape, kind of a square, double triangle. I don't know how to describe it. It's gauze. It's not paper filter. Well, it's paper, but it's, it's compostable. You don't have to worry about uh, throwing in the compost when you get it home, you can. But it does allow the silt through. So I know that in the bottom of this cup, there will be a little bit of silt. Now, honestly, that's not a big deal. Uh, if you're used to drinking French press coffee, you're used to having silt in the bottom of your cup anyway, because there's really no way around it unless the coffee's ground in a $5,000 grinder where it makes every particle exactly the same size, you're gonna have silt in the bottom of your cup. That's just is. If you don't like that, this is not the way to do it. And I mentioned don't squeeze it because in squeezing it, that's when I found that you get some of the silt to come through the gauze. So don't squeeze your coffee bag. Oh, that's actually, not bad. Like I said, it's better than anything I could make myself. Maybe still not my preferred way of making coffee. You may like it. If you want to give it a try, I'll put the links in the video description for you to give it a try. They have sample packs, probably the best way to do it before you commit to buying large boxes of it. Uh, all right, now it's time to move on to what I call the secret compartment compartment or the secret feature of this coat. It occurs to me there was another feature of this coat I don't think I mentioned and that is it also has pit zips right up under here. So there's a snap closure and then the zipper underneath your armpit there so you can open up and vent off some heat that way. All good features. But there's one other feature about this coat which is kind of unique. Any Canadian military veterans out there probably already know what I'm talking about. There is a hidden zipper on the inside of the hem on the back of the coat. I think I'll have to come closer to show you this. All right. Make sure you can get it all in frame. All right, so here's the coat. I'm gonna turn the coat inside out. And right down here at the bottom, this is the very back, like that would be the center of my back, right down here at the bottom is a zipper hidden under a flap of nylon. And if I open that zipper up, which I'm going to do, YKK zipper again, inside of there is a strap, or a set of straps, they tie together. So you can do one of two things with them, all right? Yeah, I'll use it like that. So it's a nylon webbing strap. It's not really a true shoulder strap, but it serves as a shoulder strap. Now, what's the point of having this? Well, you can do one of two things. You can reach in because now what I've opened is the inner lining. These, la these jackets are four layers. There's two inner linings, the Gore-Tex and then the outer lining. So I can reach into the very inner lion lining and start turning the jacket inside out on itself. So it's like, I don't know, I've got a bunch of stuff in the pockets. Wonder if it'll all go in. Just keep, maybe I'll take a, my gloves in there? Yep. Take my gloves out. That doesn't need the extra bulk of the gloves going in. Uh, lost it. There we go. And I've used this feature and found it excellent for what it is. All right, it's probably not a good idea to do with, with all the stuff still in the pockets. Oh, but it went in though. Now that zipper is on the outside. And I've created 
a duffel bag with a shoulder strap. I can throw it over my shoulder, get up. Now I've left the strap too long, it's way down here on my waist. I left it, I can carry it like a shoulder bag or I can tie it around my waist so it's behind my back. And I'm not having to carry this over my arms or like, what do you do with your coat when you're, you're too hot, you don't need it, it's the sun came out, whatever, and you, you want to do something with your coat, you can't leave it behind. You can turn it inside out in its own pocket and it creates its own, actually there is a little bit of room. With all the stuff I had in the pockets, I can still probably put a few more things inside of this. It's created quite a good sized shoulder bag, so it's inside of its own pocket. Best way to describe it. Cool feature, right? I haven't seen that on any other coat. It's really very, very nice. In fact, I may just wear it or carry it over my shoulder on the way out here because, uh, you know, I got a little warm coming in. I'm actually starting to cool off, so maybe I won't. Maybe I'll put it back on. Okay, give me one moment and we're going to wrap this video up. Yeah, it's actually not too bad. It's not too bad at all. Better than my homemade stuff. So, you know, if you like that convenience of a, that bag that you can put in your coffee cup, give them a look and see what you think. Uh, okay, let's wrap this video up. A few closing thoughts. So this has been a nice, successful hike this afternoon out here in my local woods. I came out looking for two things. I found both of them, which are small birch trees or birch trees where I could reach low hang, a yellow birch specifically, where I could reach the low hanging branches. Tell me why I did that. And the other one is I was looking for uh, young balsam firs or young white pine trees. And tell me what I did that for. And we'll see who, who gets it. When uh, the time is right, I'll come back up here and I'll be going back to the trees that I found and doing something with them. All right. Now, this was kind of fun. This turned out to be a video that I was showing something that I own, that I bought, that was cheap. Anybody can buy these things, these military surplus equipments. I've never really featured them before. People ask about them. I didn't think anybody would be interested in that jacket. I was wrong. But uh, what I liked about it is you ask the question and I have an opportunity now to answer it for you. So hopefully that's valuable. If it is, please say so. That you appreciated me being able to show you something like that. Uh, if you have any other suggestions, anything else you want me to show you, demonstrate things that I own or things that maybe I can get my hands on to show you, I'll do that as well. Or any other topics that you want me to cover while I'm out here in the woods that is not a product review. And I apologize. Yes, the coffee was a product review technically, but it was also a methodology of making coffees. And I shared with you how you could do it at home if you wanted to give that a try as well. <sighs> All right, that's it. Put everything you want to say in the video or in the show notes, not the show notes, the comment section. I'll put the link to that coffee and at least one or two surplus stores that you can take a look at. The, those jackets, these jackets, as well as I think it was the carbon felt. I said I'd put all that in the video description. Right, time to for me to head home. As you can see, the sun's getting low. Get out and explore. Take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.